Welcome to the troubleshooting section of this DVD. I hope you're here because you're watching the entire video before you assemble your machine and not because you're looking for an answer to a problem. In either case, let's see what we can share with you. The first thing to remember is that Jeff Jarvie encourages calls from customers for questions and problems with the machine, anything like that. Just call Jeff. Uh, he's very helpful and he's happy to take your calls. So if you're having problems with rotational consistency of your stone, there are two things to check first. The first thing to check is the thumb, thumb screw on the index lever right here. Make sure it's not tricked in, allowing a little bit of rotation. If it is, when you try to turn the quill back and forth, you'll hear that sound and you'll feel the quill moving. Loosen that screw, the clicking will go away and the movement will go away and the rotational consistency will come back. The second thing to check if you have rotational consistency problems is make sure that the index gear retaining bolt right at the back of the index gear right here, make sure that bolt is snug. The way to test it is to grab the quill and try to rotate it. You can be a little more aggressive in this. If you're not hearing a click but feel the quill moving, it means this bolt has worked itself loose. Generally that doesn't happen, but it has happened. So whenever you're putting the index gear on, make sure you're finger tight and then go ahead and use the Allen screw, the Allen wrench in the back of this thing and snug it down nice and snug so there's no play. Those are the two main things to find uh, to resolve rotational inconsistencies in your cutting. If you experience misaligned facets after you transfer, you probably need to do what I call sighting in the rifle or aligning the cheater. The facetron comes from the factory in a pretty tightly aligned condition, but they don't align it optically. So if you want to experience the full precision that this machine can really offer, you want to sight the rifle in for yourself. And the details on how to do that are in the chapter 9 on this DVD, uh, Sighting in the Rifle. It's that, that's the title of the chapter. So if uh, you want to do that, if you're having rotational alignment problems after you transfer, go watch that chapter. It'll take you step by step on how to sight in the rifle. If you think the cheater is stuck or it's turning just too hard, remember that it's spring-loaded and it's supposed to be stiff so it doesn't creep around on you. It's spring assisted to the left, so turning to the right, you're pushing against the spring. Turning to the left, you're backing off away from the spring. So typically, it's going to feel as you're turning it clockwise, which is this way. As you're turning it clockwise, it will feel tighter than when you turn it counterclockwise. It's important that that spring is tight so you don't accidentally rotate it or let it shift around uh, while you're fastening. Make sure not to try moving the cheater with the index gear locking uh, thumb screw in place, it'll bind the cheater and damage the shaft a little bit. If you have bad sounds coming from your machine, the first thing that I found with my machine is a squeaking sound. And I've never had that be anything other than the splash pan having crept up until it's making contact with the turning platen. And as the platen touches that wet splash pan, it makes a terrible squeak, squeak, squeak. Sounds like uh, uh, bad bearings, but it's, it's really not. It's uh, usually the splash pan against the platen. If you just push down the inside of that, that squeaking stops immediately. If it's not the platen, then it's probably the drive belt. And if you take a little rag with WD-40 on it and wipe it with just a little bit like you're cleaning it, that sound will usually go away. If you hear a really bad scraping sound, that might be bearings. Anything that's squeaking or ticking, that's usually a belt or the splash pan. If you have questions about any of those things, call Jeff Jarvie at Facetron and explain to him what you're hearing or play it for him over the, over the phone and uh, he'll solve it for you. This has been the troubleshooting chapter of the Facetron video. If you have other questions or problems with your machine, remember Jeff's always happy to take calls from customers and uh, call him before getting out your mallet or your wrenches. The next chapter of this DVD is about calibrating the protractor.